the venerable religious dear parishioners on this celebration of the feast of Corpus Christi I would like to start off by talking about the word covenant what is a covenant it's definitely more than a contract a contract is a binding obligation for the exchange of goods and services and it doesn't even require a written document remember this the saying a handshake agreement even you don't even you don't even need to shake hands for a contract to be binding you agree with somebody you will build me this building I will pay you this amount of money or I will give you this in exchange for that these are enforceable by civil law and most especially they come under the seventh commandment thou shalt not steal it is a sin against the seventh commandment to not honor a contract to not pay one's just debt for a good or service received it's something we should all take seriously examine our conscience even have I fulfilled all the contractual obligations that I've entered into and we enter many of them in life some of them quite simple some of them very involved but binding in conscience an agreement that must be fulfilled to keep that seventh commandment of God but there's something even higher than a contract it's a covenant because goods and services are not the only thing exchanged a person or persons are exchanged that's what's so inspiring about a young man when he kneels before the bishop to receive tonsure his first step towards the priesthood his first formal step it's not completely irrevocable like the vow of celibacy taken at subdiaconate but nevertheless the young man kneeling there before the bishop is saying to Jesus I give you myself I'm giving myself and he knows that Jesus is giving himself to that young man they're entering into a very special relationship I give myself or when a young man or a young woman kneel before the religious superior and they take their vows or even the bishop those are not irrevocable in themselves because they haven't taken final vows but the proper way for that young man and young woman to think is I'm giving myself for my whole life and this is what's so special about first profession of vows because that's when not only the young person is entering into this covenant with God but the religious order or religious congregation pledges itself to this young person we are no matter what happens we are standing by you it being with all within the framework of the constitutions and rules but it's so inspiring is it not to be there for a vows ceremony and then marriage that is a covenant that's two people a man and a woman and it can only be that by God's own definition enter into a covenant and they don't know all the things they are in for it for that matter nor does the young cleric or the brother or sister taking vows you don't know what it all is going to entail and marriage is different in the sense that yes it's a sacrament but it is irrevocable till death do us part 
And that's what's so inspiring about a wedding because they are entering into a covenant. They are giving themselves. As the saying goes that I just read recently, a man and a woman enter into the covenant and they find out for the rest of their lives what that covenant entails. So true. But by the grace of God, you are there for the better, for the for worse, for richer, for poorer, sickness and in health, till death do us part. Now, why do I talk about all this, these covenants? In, because I want you to understand today that the blessed sacrament is a covenant. How so? When we read Holy Scripture, we find that there are actually six covenants that God entered into. Yes, God himself, he entered into a covenant with his human creatures. Let that sink in for a moment. The infinite has come down to his human creatures and said, I want to give myself to you and I want you to give yourselves to me. And six specific times, a covenant happened between God and human beings. How can we be worthy of this? We can't. And yet this goes to show how much God loves his human creatures. The first covenant was with Adam and Eve. He promised to take them to heaven if they would just love him faithfully, not turn their backs on him. He gave them marriage and the, and the Sabbath as signs of his love, but they turned their backs to, on God. They broke the covenant. God did not give up on his human creatures. The next covenant was the covenant with Noah. Remember how God destroyed the whole human race in the great flood? Only eight people survived. So God is now entering into a new covenant with these eight people. Well, specifically with Noah, but really with these eight people. And he is promising that he will never destroy the world again by water. And the seed now of Noah will now be the new start of the human race. This was a covenant. The third covenant that God entered into was with Abraham, the father of the chosen people. And the circumcision would now be the sign of that binding covenant between God and and this, his chosen people, now chosen in the sense that this one race is now set aside and God wants to be married to them, so to speak, because that's what a covenant is. And then it is formulated or formalized even more with Moses, and that is the fourth covenant. And now they are a specific race. With, with, with Abraham, it was the beginning of a race. Now it is already the race of people, the Semitic race. And God is saying, I want to be your God. Be faithful to me. I will bless you in all these ways, but you need to be faithful. And we read in the Old Testament Unfortunately, so many times the people broke the covenant over and over and over. God still did not give up. He made a fifth covenant, this time with King David. They are now a royal people. So you see how God keeps giving himself and it keeps going up and up and up to a higher level of giving, a higher level of blessing in this covenant. If only we could realize better the, the, our obligation to God. We, we have entered into this covenant, yes. And God saved the best 
for last. What did God give in the sixth covenant, which happens now in the New Testament? He gives his own physical body and he seals it in his own blood. At the Last Supper, take and eat, for this is my body. I am now giving to you my physical body to literally consume. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life in him. You cannot live forever, eternally, unless you enter to that level of the covenant where you eat his flesh and drink his blood. How loved we are. And then, you know that saying, signing an agreement in one's blood? You talk about bindingness of a contract where the people, after they sign the contract, they will prick themselves or cut themselves and put the blood on the document. Signed and sealed in blood. For this is the chalice of my blood, of the new and eternal covenant, the mystery of faith which shall be shed for you and for many unto the remission of sins. There can be no greater covenant between God and his creatures, his baptized creatures. That's the covenant you have to enter into to be baptized, but that's not enough. You have to eat his flesh and drink his blood, worthily, of course, as St. Paul tells us. So this is what we celebrate in Corpus Christi, the sixth and final and most ultimate of all covenants, in the Old Testament, God could not give his body. He didn't have a body, a physical body. But in the New Testament, he most certainly has a physical body, and he signed and sealed it in his blood. Where is his blood? It's all over the cross. It's all over the ground below the cross. It's the, the blood that he gave his apostles to drink at the Last Supper. You see then why we are so, so blessed as Catholics. There is, there's no nation, as one of the Psalms says, that has its God as close as we do because in none of those religions do you partake of his body and blood. This is the one and only one true religion where we partake in this way of the covenant. Know how you are blessed. Know how you are loved. And just as when you work at the covenant of marriage or those that are called to religious life, you work at the covenant of your vows or those that are ordained priests, you work at the covenant of your holy priesthood, you know you have to keep giving and sacrificing lovingly. When you, stop think, when you start thinking, what am I getting from the other person? That's when you stop working on the covenant. You have to keep thinking, how can I do unto? How can I love better? So let us rejoice in our covenant of the most holy sacrament of the altar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy 